Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Virginia SBDC's Google to Great webinar, Google Draw. This webinar, as those that have preceded it, is designed to give you an overview of how to actually use this powerful tool and some practical tips from a small business perspective. If you've missed any of our other webinars, you can find a recorded version on the Virginia SBDC website under online training. All of our Google to Great webinars are presented by Ray Sidney Smith, a self-proclaimed Googleologist and president of W3 Consulting, a digital business strategy firm that provides training on how to use various web-based technologies for small businesses. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type those questions into the question window and Ray will do his best to answer them. Without further ado, here's Ray Sidney Smith. Thank you, Tracy, and thank you to the Virginia SBDC Network for having me. Welcome, everybody, to the webinar. Today's webinar is called A Picture is Worth a Thousand Words, and we'll be going through a sort of tour of Google Images, Picasso Web Albums, Google Drawing, which is underneath the Google Drive product, and we'll be talking about Creative Kit, which is the product that was sort of wrapped in from a purchase Google made of a product called Picnic some time ago, so folks knew what Picnic was. Either way, I just wanted to start out with some uh, basics. Uh, first and foremost, if you are on Twitter, feel free to go ahead and, and tweet at me. Uh, you can go ahead and do that at W3 Consulting. Feel free to hashtag, hashtag that Google to create. And uh, so we'll get started with some pictures because it's all about pictures today, right? So uh, first and foremost, sometimes pictures just speak for themselves. And sometimes pictures need a little bit of words to convey the message that you're trying to give, especially as small business owners. I really enjoy this picture, one, uh, because it reminds me of my own kitten at some point when he was a kitten, uh, my cat when he was a kitten. Uh, but, you know, it clearly evokes a very strong message. And we all know that pictures evoke strong messages. Another one that I really like is this yellow brick road. For some of us, it will remind us and harken back to our young days when we read Frank Baum's The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, maybe the play, maybe the uh, the movie, and potentially the, the stage production, the musical version of the, uh, the Wizard of Oz. But pictures in and of itself uh, alone, you know, are, are very, you know, emotionally evocative, but we care more about what they mean to us as small business owners. And so I'm going to talk about how this product, the product I'm talking about today really wraps together, which is why I want to start off with Google Images. So I'm going to just jump over to Google Images, and we can start from there. If we, uh, I'm just going to log out account, log to another account. But we're, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to go into Google Images, and uh, and I'm going to just give you some scenarios where your photo, photographs, your photography in general, your your images and pictures about your company are really important to the overall search engine uh, marketing campaign that you're ongoing with the process of web presence management that you're doing for your business. So if I just go to the uh, search browser, let's go to google.com, and I do any particular search. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and search because I was looking at the Wizard of Oz. I'm going to type in the Wizard of Oz. You can see Google automatically gives me lots of information as it relates to the Wizard of Oz. But most importantly is that when I'm queued into the images here on the screen, you can see here that the Wizard of Oz, the, the picture of the original uh, Judy Garland uh, film, is there on my screen. I, I'm, I'm drawn to the images that are, that are related here below. Right here, Google gives me pictures of, of the cast and, and so on and so forth. And uh, right below the, the basic text of this, you can see that they've already noticed that my likelihood is that I'm looking for an image or something related to uh, the Wizard of Oz. Now, if I go ahead and click on this Images for the Wizard of Oz link, I'm going to click on it here. It's going to take me to, to uh, Google Images. Notice on the left-hand side panel here, if you do any Google search nowadays, you will find that this left-hand side panel of filters is available, and number two below web is Images. And Images allows me to go ahead and search for images that are on the web, openly on the web. Now, there are a couple things associated with images on the web and why it makes sense for your small business to have really great, evocative, emotive videos on the web. I mean, uh, emotive pictures on the web. 
Uh, one is that when I go ahead and click on any of these images, uh, now they may be anywhere on any different website, right? In this case, the first one here is on IMDB, the Internet Movie Database. The second one here is from Rotten Tomatoes, the movie review site. If I click on this image here, Google takes me to this special page. Now this page, of course, is showing me the image, and the image is the one that I was looking for. Great, the cover of the, of the uh, Wizard of Oz. Now, notice right behind that image, what did Google do? Google actually loaded, preloaded, the website for the picture that's hosting this image, um, the, the, the website that's hosting this particular image. And to the right-hand side panel here, it gives me some information about this image as well. One, that this image may be subject to a copyright, and we want to make sure we pay attention to uh, the use of copyrighted material. It gives me the type of, of image that I'm looking at. And as well, if you took this picture with a, uh, for, for example, I have a Canon uh, you know, Rebel X SI, I think, or something like that. If I took that with that particular photo and I took it in you know, raw format and threw it up there, it would actually tell me all of that information right here in this little panel. It would know exactly the camera I took it with, exactly the dimensions, and all of the raw support image format that I would uh, that I would need, what we call XIF, uh, you know, format. It would give me all of that information about the image there. Here you can it, it tells you what size the image is and whether or not this image is being shown in full size. And you can see that it's the same size. If this had been resized to, to show within the window, it would actually you know tell you that it was actually shrunk so that you could see it differently. It tells me the size of the file, which is important, you know, because if I'm doing lots of image manipulation, I want to know the file sizes that I'm working with. And right up here, which is the most powerful tool that you can really use when it comes to being found on the web, but when it comes to images. So I found this image, but more importantly, I'm most likely looking for a product or service. So in this case, I'm looking for the movie, and if I were looking to purchase the movie, and this took me to say an Amazon website, uh, it would show me the picture that Amazon presented, but then if I just click on website for this image, what it automatically does is it just takes away the overlay that Google has done, you know, uh, provided me. It's taken me away from Google, and it's led me directly to the website in which I was looking for that content. What that means is, is that if you have lots of rich images all over the web, all over your website, that is, and it's being indexed by Google. Every time someone finds one of these images and it calls them to action, that is to come to your website, they are just one click away from that image to your website at any given time. And Google facilitates that process. It leads them on this sort of path that helps them figure that out. So I really want to impress upon everyone the power of being able to use great images and getting, getting you to the web. So if you have any questions about Google Images specifically, feel free to go ahead and put those into the into the question bar for, for uh, Tracy to ask me, and I'm happy to answer those questions. But that's pretty much the primary point: is that good images that are within the within the uh, the Google Images database within the search are going to be found, and they're going to lead people to your website in ways in which normal text web-based websites alone, if your website was just text and had no images, Google Images is, n is completely missed. You're not catching those folks who are much more image-oriented and therefore will find you through searching for images or finding images through other means that Google uses to, to draw more traffic to you. It's a very underutilized part of it. A couple of things to notice when you are doing Google searches is that notice that this image uh, uh, let's look at uh, some of these images here. Uh, one, you know, the Internet Movie Database is always going to get pretty high ranking. So even though their image here is, uh, you know, has sort of a funky file name, uh, if we jump over to the third one, which is some website, I don't know who these folks are, but notice that their image name, the, the actual file name of their of their image is wizardofoz.jpg. That part of your of your file is really important here because Google has very limited ways of knowing what your what an image look is saying. I um, mean the technology is getting better and I'm going to show you as we go along through the hour what that means. But first and foremost, having a file name for the for the image of whatever you're looking for 
for instance, uh, I, I always go back to the to the idea of, of a dentist. You know, if I'm looking for a particular dentist, uh, if I type in, you know, um, let's see here, uh, uh, I'm looking for braces, say uh, dental braces. As you can see, we see all the various pictures for braces. We'll notice that in the file name, braces appear most likely in every one of these images. Uh, the, the importance of the words within there, if I was a dentist, I would want to make sure that all of my products and services had images associated with them, and those images associated with them had file names that were, you know, whatever it is that my services are. I would also you know, impress upon you that if you don't understand the technology behind some of web development, just know that when you're discussing that with your web developer or whoever's helping you with your website, make sure that you have what is called alt tag. That's A-L-T, Albert Larry Tom. Alt tag, go ahead and tell the web browser that that particular image, even if it's missing some of the, some of the other components, is associated by its keyword terms with the image that it's, that it's representing. So your website, if you were an orthodontist, you would have a picture of your, you know, maybe yourself working with a patient, and uh, and you would you would put orthodontist in Reston, Virginia, or orthodontist in Lovington, Virginia, or whatever it might be, and that allows you to go ahead and let people know that image, especially Google, Google Images is looking for those words, and it's looking for that word that those words that show up sort of in the in the in the web coding of that particular website. So just know that those are those are the two basic premises behind making sure that your images are, are well poised to be found within Google Images and those of course let people in. Uh, so so again if you have any questions feel free to ask yep. Tracy about Google Images. I've got one here, Ray. Question, Tracy? Yep. Okay, go for are it. Are you saying that this will help with SEO? Yes. That was it? Yeah, this is this this is a definite this is a definite aspect of search engine optimization that I think a lot of people miss. You know, you want you want all of the components of your website, whether they be text, whether they be video, whether they be pictures, they should all be optimized so that Google can find them and drive traffic to your website. Okay, so with that out of the way, I'm going to go on to uh, the, the broader product of, of um, talking about Google uh, the Google Picasso web album concept. So if we just go over to google.com forward slash Picasso, you'll find that Google has this product called Picasso. And Picasso, I'm not going to download and show you because you can do this on your own time, but and it's a, it's a very large product. But Google Picasso is a, is a program that allows you to go ahead and manipulate photos. It allows you to store them, organize them, and manage them both on your desktop, you know, whether you keep those on a network drive or your local shared drive, or um, and as well in a virtual shared photo album. That is, you can have private photo albums, but as well you can have shared photo albums. And that's the part that I really care about. The ability for you to be able to store and manage your photos live on the web, and then being able to share them out to various areas of the web to expose yourself better and greater to your social network, which of course hopefully drives traffic to your website because you have good links from those posts into your website. And I'll and I'll try to show you that momentarily. Uh, and then of course being able to manage all of the images that you might have to work with, you know, for your business just in general. So the concept itself, just a couple of things about it. It allows you to of course upload and share your photos as it says here on the screen. You can also do this really cool thing, which is to tag your Google Plus contact and share pictures with them as well. This is really fantastic if you can facilitate, and you know you have to sort of get creative, but you can facilitate the idea of uh, bringing folks who are your Google Plus contact to, to, to basically sharing your pictures and tagging you and or your business in those photos, which of course exposes you to a greater network. So that's really really great. And then you have all of these image editing features that are built right into Picasso, including the side-by-side -side editing. So if you're looking at an original image, you can actually pull the image to a new 
uh, to a, to another image and start editing that so you can see the comparison of your original image against your old image. So a really great tool to be able to do those things. But the process itself, I, I really recommend you download and uh, check it out. See, see if the product really helps you manage images. I know that a lot of folks who are in the design world use Picasa as a, as a, as a downloadable uh, program to be able to manage their, their images, and they do it with great success. So that's, that's Picasa that you download under this piece of software. But more importantly, if we go to picassoweb.google.com, uh, uh, which is P-I-C-A-S-A -A web.google.com, you'll be taken to uh, a, a new website. And this website is a virtual web album and we call it Picasso Web Album. And you can see here that you have the ability to manage your photos within album. So I'm just going to go through and we can show you, I can show you around the, the product itself. So here you can see that every album that you create within uh, anywhere in Google, so if it's Google Plus, whether it's within uh, you know, your uh, Picasso Web Album uh, proper, or if you're in another one of Google's products, many of Google's other products will just automatically store these images directly into the Picasso Web Album. And you have, I forget how much storage, but you have quite a bit of storage. You have a, you have a gigabyte of storage. And so, uh, so they start off with a gigabyte of storage. You can always increase that limit. But for the most part, you have, you have this, this uh, gigabyte of storage. And we can create albums. So let's just start with uh, going over to, your, you start on the Home tab. I'm going to go over to My Photos tab. So I'm going to go over to My Photos tab. And here is where you can uh, start to see all of your photos by themselves, by themselves, without having any of the other you know, featured images or whatever showing up in, in the way. So here goes uh, three photo albums that I have. Uh, one is a scrapbook photo. Scrapbook photos, those are linked, I'm guessing, back to the Google Plus page. And I don't have any pictures in there. You can see I have one uh, profile photos album which is linked back to my, my Google Plus profile. And then I have this August 8th, uh, 2012 uh, photo album, which has one image in it, which happens to be a, a QR code that I was messing around with for purposes of a webinar. So I have these three photo albums. If I just go into the photo album by clicking on the name of that particular photo album, you can see that Picasso gives me a couple of different options to be able to browse the images as well as manipulate them. So in here, I have the ability to go ahead and uh, go into a slideshow view. If I click on slideshow, you can see that it shows me a slideshow. And I can increase the speed uh, in seconds of how quickly they, they go ahead and scroll through those various images. I can add captions and hide those captions. And, and I can, of course, scroll through the images. So it will do that automatically. So I can put in a slideshow view if I were in a sales meeting, for instance, and I needed to go ahead and put together a couple of images that were, you know, uh, emotive for whatever the, the particular sales issue was, I could put that in there and go ahead and broadcast that to my, my customers. Uh, you can automatically share. So if I was going ahead to take this, these, this album, I could automatically share that on Google Plus. You can see throughout all of the Google products, Google has pretty much given you the Google Plus share button to be able to share this out to folks. Now, again, you may be in Google Plus, but remember that you can also go ahead and just share these, this information by email. So that if I needed to go ahead and send this to myself, for instance, I could just go ahead and add my own email address in here, and it could go ahead and send that email to me so that I knew that I have this image available to me to, to look at. So even if I'm not in Google+, Plus, I can go ahead and, uh, that is, my recipients are in Google+, Plus, I can still send it to them by email. If I wanted to add more photos, I can just click on the Add Photos button. And that allows me to be able to drag and drop images directly from my desktop or from some other resource and go ahead and put those onto, uh, onto, onto the Picasso Web Album virtual albums area. So I can drag photos here, or I can click on the Select Photos from my computer. It goes ahead and uploads that. You can see here it shows you your online storage allotment, so you're always aware of how much storage you have. And then, of course, you can go ahead and upgrade storage uh, whenever you need to. Uh, they, it's, a, it's a fairly nominal fee. And so if we jump over to upgrade storage, you can see that uh, it's free. If you have uh, the, uh, you can see your current plan, wherever you currently are. And you can see that you have a gigabyte of, of image storage using Picasa 
and then you can of course upgrade that to 25 gigabytes for Drive and Picasso for just two dollars and fifty cents a month, and then for 100 gigabytes it's five dollars per month. So very inexpensive for you to be able to increase the um, the storage allotment for those particular um, products. So you can add images here pretty easily. Done uh, again if you're using the uh, cost of uh, uh, program, you can you can basically manage and move those things around from the Picasso either on a Windows or Mac platform. You can just go ahead and organize and edit those images, and then they can automatically be synchronized with your Picasso web album. So you're not really locked into you know using just the web virtual web album. But I happen to work almost exclusively within the virtual web album because I don't really manage that many photographs offline. So, but I think that if you manage a number of photos, a fair number of photos offline, I would recommend that you actually go ahead and do that uh, using using the Picasso download. So you have the My Photos stuff. When you go into a particular uh, album, you can click on a specific photo, and uh, and then we can do some other things. Here, Google gives you the ability to order uh, order prints. You can go ahead and order uh, specific prints of, of a whole album, and uh, you can go ahead and do that. On that. Um, but you can also change the names of this particular album. So if I click on Album Properties, and we're on the Actions tab here, and if I just click on Album Properties from the drop-down, it gives me the ability to rename the, so if I just type in, you know, the title was actually the QR Codes webinar, and it shows me the date of the webinar, I can choose a different date, and I can give a, a small description of that particular, you know, set of images. You can do that as well. Uh, Google as well gives you this uh, this really cool ability to, to tell you where you actually took those pictures. And uh, then once you, if you've actually placed on enough of your albums where you've taken photographs, it will actually then show you a map. You can uh, take yourself out of this album, and when you're looking at all the albums, you can actually map where all of the pictures were actually taken. You can see it on a map. You can see where all the various photographs you took. So if you're going on, uh, if you happen to travel a lot for work, or if you, uh, you know, travel around to lots of different locations for your clients, and you take pictures before and after photos, potentially, if you were a home stager, or if you're a professional organizer, or something like that, or if you do some kind of uh, landscape design, or something like that, you could take before and after photos and actually place them on the map, and then you can use that Google Images map to see those images live in the map itself which can be really fun and also useful in terms of seeing what, what you can. Here's where you actually also can control some of your visibility. You can see down there visibility is public on the web, limited, meaning anyone with a link, and then only you. You can, uh, of course, make those uh, photo locations view viewable to your viewers and or not by the checkbox here. Uh, you can also share particular albums. So you can see here I'm in just inside the album. There's a share button here. When I click on share, it gives uh, that person, uh, gives me, again, the share uh, screen for Google+. Plus. So really what it's doing here is it's giving me the ability to go ahead and select the folks who I want to share this with. So I've, if I decided to share this with myself, I can go ahead and click on share. And now not only is that shared with me on Google+, Plus, but you can see here if I came into my uh, Picasso web album as my real self, which is my real rate of business, uh, not this dummy account, I would actually be able to see now this photo album in my other account because I've shared it with myself. So I can go ahead and share things individually with people as well as uh, you know separately from that. And so you can see here, this is a photo location to create the album map. And so each of the images in my in my album can be made to have its own location as well as an entire album as well. So then I'm able to go ahead and create this album map. Okay. So if I clicked on this specific image. And uh, went over to actions and uh, where is it? Sorry, uh, caption. Oh no, I think it's only on. Sorry, you're only allowed to set the album. The, oh no, the location is here, right here on the right hand side. Photo location. So I could I can put you know, uh, Old Town Alexandria here, with save. And now the uh, the photo location is set for this particular image as being right here in Alexandria. Now when I go back out here and click on the, uh, you can see it automatically place it. You can show you can see where the images were taken. And if I keep doing more and more images, if I keep tagging more and more in images with location, uh, that that map will get more 
looking for a bus, but they can a feature of it. You can go ahead and uh, pull an RSS feed of all of the images so that if you were trying to push your, every time you took an image, you wanted to push it out to some other place, you know, like Facebook or something like that, you could use this RSS feed function to go ahead and do that using this, uh, you know, there are a number of tools out there on the web to be able to push an RSS feed out to a particular place. You can push those images to Twitter or to Facebook or to, uh, you know, wherever you'd like to. And so you have the RSS image options here as well. Uh, you can place captions on all the images. I'm back on Actions, the Actions drop-down menu. And on the Actions drop-down menu, you can change the album cover. So if I had more than one image in here and I wanted to place a different album cover on that particular set of pictures, I could go ahead and do that. I could place captions on all of the images so that I could do that as well. And I could, I could of course, delete the album. The grayed out ones are grayed out because those are associated with Picasso. And so if, if I don't have, uh, oh, no, that's not true. So the, the two down, the download to Picasso and print to Picasso, print with Picasso, are for having Picasso, you know, in the, in the uh, image itself. Make collage and make movie are associated with, I have more than one photo in here, it will allow me to do a collage. I only have one, so it won't let me. Uh, and then make a movie would be, of course, if I had video in here, uh, and I wanted to go ahead and make, make a, a, a movie out of uh, multiple images and video clips. Uh, under Organize, once closed, Organize allows me to go ahead and uh, resort and move photos around. And this is also where, within the virtual web album, you can actually select multiple photos and move them or delete them. So you'll see in the primary area where we where where we were, you can't actually select more than one image and move them or delete them. You go into Organize, and this is where you can actually go ahead and just select multiple images. You can see just click on multiple images and then click on delete, and it will give you the ability to delete multiple images, if you have duplicates or something like that, and or move multiple images to another uh, folder, another album, uh, on in, within, uh, vir within the virtual web album. Okay, So that's the functions within the album. And go back out to my photos. There we go. So back out here, you can see that uh, you have the three albums that we have in view. And if we go back to the top here, we view my public gallery. The public gallery is, of course, your images that are available and viewable on the web. Those are the ones that anyone can see. Then you have the unlisted gallery. The unlisted gallery are those which uh, only only someone can see by you providing them with a link. All right, so that's, that's the one where only folks who have a link can see it. And the rest of them, then, are private albums and cannot be seen by anyone but you. Ray, we have a couple of questions about something you just yeah, said. Sure. If you make a video, could you embed it into a PowerPoint presentation? If so, how would you do that? Or is this only for the web? Um, I, I, would, I would use YouTube for any presentation that you're going to do within, within, in, on the web. I would, I, would, I would not try to use for process for, for video. Okay. Thanks. That was it? Yep. Okay, great. All right, so any more questions, feel free. And uh, so back here out in the, in the web album area, you can see down here, in, in, in addition to the embed slideshow, you also have the, I'm sorry, in, the, in addition to the RSS feed here, you have embed slideshow. And what that means is you're actually able to go ahead and pull in the images that you have on, in virtual, uh, within the uh, virtual photo album, and go ahead and create a, uh, a, a slideshow for, say, your website or for some place that you have access to with the HTML on there. Uh, in this case, it gives you HTML links for MySpace and some other locations, I'm sure. And so you can go ahead and like, just copy and paste that right into the web code of your website. And you can create slideshows uh, pretty quickly and easily from a particular location. So if you, if you have the desire to embed a slideshow, you can go ahead and do that. I think that's really you know, a great way to sort of do a slideshow without having to do very much work at all. Uh, so you have uh, you have these items here. If we uh, hop over to the Explorer, I don't particularly like the way that Home is laid out, so I tend to go to just My Photos and Explore and sort of ignore the Home page, which sort of mixes everything up. Uh, so if you go over to Explore, you can see that Explore now has the uh, ability for you to go ahead and view pictures that other people have taken. So these are are, are publicly available photos for you to view. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean you have access to use the photos, but 
some of them in May. And uh, here we are. We have uh, popular tags for particular images, uh, you know, uh, context of images. If this happens to fit your, uh, you know, your business or industry, you may want to look at them and share those photos as well on Google Plus or whatnot with some commentary about your own business and relate them back because they are great photos. They're letting you use them in terms of sharing them, uh, but you may not be able to use them necessarily for other kinds of, uh, you know, photo manipulation purposes. You really have to read what the photo is all about. But here you can see who these folks are, and if they happen to be photographers, you might want to follow them on Google+. Plus. But this helps you to sort of learn about what photos are doing well on on the web and which ones you might want to actually uh, check out and see and, uh, and all that stuff. So, you know, it gives you a, a great ability to go ahead and uh, per, uh, peruse which photos are going to be most successful for you out there. So by looking at what's already successful as the popular photos out there, you can go ahead and see that. You can see that this person takes lots of really great photos, and uh, Google, of course, uh, goes out there and, and looks at these, uh, you know, images and sees who's talking about them, how much traffic they're getting in terms of people wanting to find them and how relevant they are to the search engine. And you can see that we can go ahead and, and uh, you know, peruse this particular person's photos and then, of course, see other things that they might have taken as well. And you can see these are gorgeous photographs. They're taken high resolution. The person really knows what they're doing. And so you can sort of mimic what they're doing. So she, uh, he or she uh, used a fish up by lens here to take pictures of some ruins. Uh, you know, some, some, some really great photographs this person has taken. So, you know, you can get an idea of what the person's doing by, um, by, by looking at that. All right? So that's the Explore tab. I think the Explore tab is just helpful for being able to check out uh, images that are, that are going out there on the web. And as, as always, in the top right-hand corner, you can search your own images. So again, if you have good descriptions, good file names, and good album names, you should be able to find all of the images that you want to from any given time right there uh, within the search field in the top right hand corner. Okay, so you can go ahead and uh, search for it, for it there. That's pretty much the cost of web albums that I want to show you, the extent that I want to show you. Uh, just getting around the, the product, being able to go into it and do some other things. And uh, I'm going to actually hop on over to Google Drawing, and then I'm going to take it back to the Creative Kit and finish off with the Creative Kit. So if we go to drive.google.com, which you could go to docs.google.com or drive.google.com to take you to the same product, we're taken over to our Google Drive product. And this is really where you create graphs and other things of that nature. Google Drawing is really designed for you to be able to manipulate more you know, display-oriented types of charts and diagrams and whatnot. So we're going to take this drawing that we're, we're going to create momentarily, and we're going to take it back to the virtual web album, and then we're going to annotate it using the Creative Kit. Okay, So I want to show you the three products in, in Confluence. So here we just go ahead to Google Drive. I clicked on Create, and the drop-down menu appeared, and I have Drawing. Okay. When I click on Drawing, it takes me over to a new tab or a new window, depending upon your setting. And now I have a new drawing waiting for me to go ahead and work on. Again, like I said, Drawing is really a product you want to use to be able to create graphs and, and things of that nature, not necessarily doing um, high-level photo manipulation. Okay, So you can add photographs in here. You can see there's a photo button. You can add an image here from either our desktop, from a snapshot that we've taken, or from a specific website. But for the most part, those images are for uh, really showcasing some particular aspect of a chart. You can design a logo in here. You can do other types of things. But for the most part, we're really going to think about charts. So say I want to just create a quick pie chart. And I'm going to go in here into the shape function. I'm going to go ahead and create a you know, circle, close to a circle that I, I can create. Uh, here, drawing allows me to be able to do a couple of things. I can shade not only the fill color, and in this case, I'm going to just change that fill color to, uh, to orange. And it allows me to also go ahead and change the line color of this particular graph. In this case, I'm going to just choose the line, uh, the outline of that to be uh, transparent. I don't want an outline other than what, whatever's in the graph. So notice that in drawing, if I, just like when we were in Google presentation, if I just go ahead and drag this image from any from any particular point, it gives me these crosshairs that tells me once the image is 
exactly centered. So here I have a, a, a you know what seems to be a perfect circle, and I go ahead and see the crosshairs when I when I click and hold on it. It tells me that it's dead center on this particular image, so I know the image is centered on here. Uh, you should give your drawing a, a title so that you know what it is, and you can just say chart or full web album. All right. So I I have this. Uh, pie chart currently right now it looks like a hundred percent of something uh, so I'm going to go ahead in here and I'm going to decide that I want to uh, change this to uh, you know some other part so I'm going to go ahead in here and I'm going to I'm going to create a, uh, a portion that is something else so I'm shrink this here I'm just playing around with the image you know you can just go ahead and in and And so we can go in and, of course, manipulate the uh, angles of this particular pie. I did a very poor job with this fun view. I, I never told anyone I was an artist. <laughs> so I, uh, let's go in here again, and I'm going to try and do this a little bit better. So here, you can just try and... and so you can see you can play around with this. I'm, you know, I'm going to pretend that that's a that's a decent <laughs> area of the pie chart that, that we're doing here. But I want to make this particular area green, and uh, you know, and of course, again, I want to take off the outline of that particular image. So, um, oh, actually, I want to make that outline be the same color of my pie chart so that it blends in. Not my pie chart. I made this one. Nope. One more time. Three times. There we go. All right. So you can see here that I've uh, I've gone ahead and placed my my pie in the pie chart. And you know I can add text here. I can say that this particular you know area is uh, you know twenty percent of you know whatever it is aspect right and so now I can go ahead and, and place the uh, more text here and say this is 80 percent of X or Y whatever and uh, so you can see that you have now have this, this chart and you can do any number of things you can do line charts you can do graphs you can do Venn diagrams you can do all sorts of fun stuff in here uh, again you know it just takes a little bit of playing with I'm, I uh, and so you can you can go ahead and do that. So you can give titles to, to things. So if I wanted to give this particular chart a title uh, to appear, I can give the chart title uh, in that particular area. And so I have this beautiful you know design chart that looks professional and whatnot. Uh, professional in the sense that I would, <laughs> if I had more time with you this morning, I would clean up this uh, this pie piece. But you know you get my point. Okay. So at this point, Google Drawing allows me to do a couple of really wonderful things. One, I can collaborate with folks. So if I wanted to go ahead and share this document, like all of the other Google products, I can go ahead, Google Drive products, I can go ahead here and add people to this. So if I wanted to go ahead and invite someone, I can go and invite them, and they'll get an option to come in and edit this document with me. And once they've edited doc that document with me, I would probably add my staff with the better you know, control over visuals, and they'd be able to go ahead and fix this up for me. And I could also have comments you know, along with this, the comment string. So I'd say uh, the, uh, you know, 20% uh, portion of the pie needs to be fixed, okay? And now I know that, oh, that, that particular item needs to be fixed. I could have other folks who comment on this, and then once that piece has been fixed, we can click on Resolve, and now we know that that particular item within the graph is being resolved. And so you can actually sort of project manage right within the image as well if you're working with multiple people. So this commenting area is really helpful and for being able to manage those things. Uh, the other thing that it allows me to do is to go ahead and make copies of this so that I can go ahead and multiply this image if I needed to use this as the base for another image. So I might want to create the original pie, you know, get it really perfect, 
and then pull it into a new instance and go ahead and use that to be able to use for purposes for other purposes. As well, it allows me to be able to go ahead and download this image in multiple formats. So when I talked about uh, creating a logo or something like that, you would probably want to do that in uh, in a vector graphic. That is something that you can pull apart and play with. That is a, a web designer or a, a logo designer or someone else like that. So if you were working on a, on a logo design with your logo designer, you'd be able to work on this particular image, you know, in a in a in a sketch format, and then be able to, to export it to them so they could see what your ideas were as you were working with it. So uh, as well, they might be able to export their logo to you, and take you could take it into to Google Drawing and make edits to it uh, for the purpose of making maybe a black and white version or something else like that without reducing any of the quality of that particular logo. So a really great product for being able to do those things because you can import the, the file as well as uh, export it. So you can download it in PDF in what we call an SVG or scal scalable vector graphic. You can download it in a PNG, which is a law for, uh, file format. So you can uh, post it on the web and so it can expand and, and shrink without losing any of its clarity. And then a JPEG, which of course should stay the size that you created it, it really doesn't shrink or expand very well. So you really want to keep that image uh, pretty much to the size that you saved it. Okay, but uh, the JPEG is the uh, the web standard for most images, but PNG works really well as well now because it is accepted by almost every web browser. Okay, so you can go ahead and do that. You can obviously print and do all the other functions that we've really talked about in prior webinars as it relates to those particular products. So I don't want to really go over a lot of those things, but you can do all of the things that you can pretty much do in any other uh, Google Drive product as it relates to basic uh, editing and sharing and uh, publishing. So you can publish this on the web, publish this in, in all sorts of other formats, okay? And uh, of course we have undo and redo, we're not going to go those. Okay, so we've created this particular uh, chart for Google uh, Picasso Web Album. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and download this file. I'm going to download it as a, as a PNG. And, uh, and I'm just going to save the file. I'm going to save it into my downloads folder. So I went ahead and downloaded the file. And now we're going to hop back over to Picasso. And I'm going to go over to Picasso and I'm going to click on Upload. This takes me over to the Google Picasso uh, upload screen. I'm just going to add it to an existing album. And so it gives me the option to use the August 8th album that I have there. I'm going to go ahead and select photos from my computer. And I'm going to go to my downloads folder. And I'm going to go find my chart. I have it here, chart for Google Picasso web album. I'm going to click on open. And you can see now that it's going to go ahead and upload that particular image. Now you can see the image is now uploaded. And when I'm done uploading my images, I can upload multiple images you know, into this at a time. I go ahead and click on Done. And now you can see that the screen is back to the upload screen. I'm going to go back to My Photos. And now you can see that the August 8th uh, photo album has two photos here. That might be small for you, but you, uh, right now I have two photos now in here. If I click on this particular album, you can see now my image is in here. If I click on this image, it gives me a couple of things that I can do. I can, of course, create a caption. The chart, my chart, or, or X, okay? And so I can save that caption, and now that caption is available there, and I can go ahead and, and uh, edit that caption if I needed to. If this was a shared document, if, I'm, if I was in the, in the same space with multiple people, I could go ahead and add a comment, and everyone could go ahead and see that comment right along with that comment. Now, again, this commenting string is also replicated within Google+. Plus. So if you're using Google+, Plus personally, and you are sharing this photo with those folks, it's actually sharing those images right along with your, uh, your Google+, Plus followers, your Google+, Plus circle folks. They're the people you're sharing with. It. So don't, don't worry about it being publicized on the web to anyone else other than the folks that you're sharing it with, okay? So you have that ability. And uh, of course, we can go ahead and add location and all sorts of other uh, of the you know items that we talked about earlier. It shows up in your RSS feed, public photo, 
and uh, so on and so forth. Notice here you have this ability, here it says photo reuse. Here you can actually edit your photo's uh, uh, actual uh, copyright, okay? So if you actually intend for this photo to be reused by other people, you want it as a base for other people to, uh, to be able to use, you can go ahead and do that. So in my case, I can click on Allow Reuse uh, under Creative Commons, and you can see here it gives me the ability now some sub check marks to allow people to use it for commercial use, allow people to remix it, meaning that they can modify that image. It can also uh, require a share alike, meaning that some people may want to use it, and you'll allow that, but they have to go ahead and allow their uh, mixed use of that product to be used also. Okay, so if they use your image as a base, they must use your image, that they must give those same rights to other people by using your image as a base. Okay? So you can change some of these copyright allowments and go ahead and, and, uh, and, and do that. I'm going to turn this off because it's not really useful, but on your images, you might want to think about how someone might actually want to use your image as a base, and if you don't mind them using that as a base, you can go ahead and do that. That's how those images actually on Google Images shows up. There's an advanced search function within Google Images. And if I have time at the end of this, I, I'll, I'll show you that actually. But uh, for the most part, you can go into Google Images into the advanced search and actually select images that allow you to be able to download and use them for purposes of uh, either modification or reuse within your own marketing uh, because they've given you the right to. You just can't go to Google Images and use any image uh, because you know those are those are copyrighted images essentially. And so you want to be able to find only the images that allow you to reuse them. Okay, so you can go ahead and cancel there. And uh, so now we have this particular image, and I want to go ahead and edit the image. So if I, I'm in the image, right, I can zoom and, and rotate the image and all sorts of other stuff. But under actions, it gives me the ability to what's called edit and creative kit. Now the really powerful part about this is that any image within Google Picasa. Uh, web album for Picasso's of application, as well as Google Plus or wherever else you might be, if you can if you can see the image, Google probably gives you the ability to use the product called Creative okay. Kit. You now, if start with the email Aaron sent you. Okay. And so, uh, if we if we go I'm ahead into my webinar kit, for another this will minutes. go ahead and it allows us to go ahead and start to uh, it, it you know, load this product called Creative Kit, which used to be called Picnic. And, uh, and you can see here the gear is moving and all this other fun stuff, but it's basically uploading all the JavaScript and all the other types of scripting language necessary. And so now we have our image. Wonderful. Now in this particular area, I can go ahead and add all sorts of really interesting stuff to this. So let's, let's uh, forgo the idea that I created a thing Google Drawing, and I just got this image from my designer or from my photographer, and I wanted to be able to add new text to this. Well, right from... Google, right? I uploaded it into Google. I can go ahead and add text to this particular image, right? By clicking on the text tab, I can go ahead and just type in whatever I wanted to. So, chart for X, right? Go ahead and add, and you can see that now chart for X is a, it appears here right on the image. And I can, if this was a photograph, you know, it would have a complete display, but just the chart, so it's only showing me the uh, viewable parts of the chart. I can go ahead and resize this text and so on and so forth and just place the text wherever I wanted to. Right on the image, I could change the, the font for this particular image uh, quickly and easily. And so you can see you can photo manipulate these, uh, photo manipulate very easily without having to know really anything about photography or whatever it might be. Uh, if I wanted to change the, uh, the effect for this image, uh, turn the image into a daguerreotype style photo, I wanted to add, uh, you know, a green page to this particular image. I can quickly and easily make the image look like a Polaroid. Uh, I can go ahead and uh, do some of these really quick and easy, fun, you know, image manipulation, uh, you know, editing, without knowing very much about those types. Uh, so, if this was a, a photograph of myself and my staff, I might want to do a quick auto fix to correct red eye and those types of things. Maybe there's some uh, exposure issues. There may be some cropping or other types of issues. You can go ahead and do that. The image is blurry. You can sharpen it. You can size the image from here to be able to, you know, to basically keep things, uh, you know, if it's in a particular area. So if I wanted to shrink this to 500, I can go ahead and do that. You see it automatically, dynamically changes the image. 
until I apply the changes so I can see what the size would be. And so I can go ahead and change the size of images and, and so on and so forth. Uh, and then I can apply changes. And so it does that automatically. So we have a lot of options when it comes to using the Creative Kit. I really like this when I'm just trying to add. Yeah. Uh, so I love using the Creative Kit just when I take photographs of you know, myself uh, with other folks. And you know, I want to share that with friends and family so that people know who particular people are who may not be able to be tagged as an Google Plus. I sometimes use it as a way to just give a description for the event or where we might have been. You might want to use it as, as a place to put captions because Google slowly but surely will, will I mean, the technology is there to basically uh, what we call optical character recognition, the ability to look at a photograph and actually see the text that might be on the image. So if someone has a Nike t-shirt on or some other brand t-shirt on, uh, Google would be able to read the image you know, by seeing the logo and text on that image and will be able to associate that with that photograph. Well, take advantage of that as a business owner and start putting your own keyword appropriate. I mean, appropriately put the keywords on there. But if that image is of you as a dentist with you know, doing some orthodontic procedure, you might want to actually place that text on the image itself. And instead of having to know how to use you know, Photoshop or other types of uh, complicated technology, that would also cost you money. You could, for free, just add and apply that text right there onto the images. You can do it very lightly and discreetly, but the image and the text is going to be there, and Google is going to be able to see it. So I really recommend the, the ability to apply keywords to images so that you're capable of seeing it. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm going to uh, leave time for questions. And, and uh, if there are questions there, I'm just going to jump over to Google Images so that you can see the the advanced image search. So uh, let's just say that I was looking to buy, uh, let's go back to the Wizard of Oz. I started off there. If I wanted to buy the Wizard of Oz book by L. Frank Baum, I can go ahead over here and uh, you can see the, the images associated with this. And then I decide, oh, wait a second. I actually want to use one of these cover photos. I want to find a cover photo that I can use in a particular item. So I, I, my, my, my thought process change, I go ahead and click on the gear, and it takes me over to the advanced, uh, let me do that again because I did that really quickly. Here, you can see there's the gear, the options gear. I can go ahead and click on advanced search. And once I'm taken over to the advanced search, I have a lot of different options. But the one I wanted to show you from earlier was the usage right. You know, under here, you see the copyright usage right. And I, I click down, you can see I can search for the Wizard of Oz book. And it will literally give me the options for those that I can use to free use or share, even commercially, the ones that free to use and share non-commercially, and the, the ones that free to use and share, free to use, to use, share, or modify, and then to free, free to use, share, or modify even commercially. So I might want to look for the free to use or share even commercially for the Wizard of Oz book. And now you can see that the images are sparse here. These are these clearly don't match the Wizard of Oz. So there's probably not a Wizard of Oz co you know, book cover that I can use uh, for, for that. So I'm going to have to go ahead and contact the publisher to see if I can go ahead and use uh, a copy of their book cover. So I might want to go back here to the uh, not filtered by license, click on this, and then I, I might go to uh, here to Wikipedia, which may have a, uh, an image that I can go to the publisher and say, hey, can I use that? image and whatnot. So that's a good way to filter out which images you're really allowed to use based on that particular item. Now it doesn't work all the time because you know some of these folks post images that they may or may not have copyright to. So really do some due diligence when you're using web images from Google Images or any other search engine for that matter. And uh, but you can uh, you can be sure that if there's an image you know within it and it is tagged you know, that way and it doesn't look like you know someone else's copyright material uh, that you can go ahead and, and potentially modify or use it within, uh, within the system. So uh, with that, uh, I'm going to go back here. And Tracy, do, does anyone have any questions? Yeah, we have a couple of questions, right? Does okay. Google maintain a library of shareware images so we can know it's safe to use without violating copyright? No, the, the the only thing they the only thing they give you is 
that functionality, which is to, to go into advanced search and to see the usage rights that have been applied within the image. Now, what, what the person who is, who is uh, tagging the usage right, the photo right, they're, they're basically you know, offering to you that, that they have the copyright to allow you to do, to do that. Okay? So I would just look at the website publisher or the person publishing the image who, you know, does it look like original content? Does it look like it's something that you are allowed to use? Then, then go from there. But if you see a Nike logo and the person, you know, is XYZ Joe, you know, 24, and they're saying that you have rights to use that photo, well, clearly there's something wrong. So really use, use your gut instincts when it comes to those things. And, uh, and then if it looks like original content and that person says you have the ability to use it, then you have at least reasonable uh, belief to be able to, to be able to use that image uh, for, for marketing. Great. Right. Um, the other question is, I missed where you can go to create a slideshow. And did you say you could create a slideshow and save it as such? So the, the slideshow is dynamic, and it's pulled from the main page. So if you're in the Web album, and you're in any particular album or in the home page, right there in the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see the embed slideshow. The embed slideshow gives you HTML that you have that you have to know how to get to paste into your own website or a website that you have control over. You can paste that into that space, and then it will automatically pull the images from your you know publicly available gallery, your public gallery, and it will pull those images into it. Okay, so you you get those images directly from public gallery and it will go ahead and just if you add photos there it will add photos there and it will automatically do that. Great. Any other questions? Well, Ray, I don't see any other questions, so we'll go ahead and, and finish this up. Thank you all for participating today. A few housekeeping items. Today's webinars will was recorded and is will be posted on the Virginia SBDC website under online training. Tomorrow you'll be receiving a follow-up email on this webinar and there'll be an evaluation link in the email. Um, please help us to continue to improve our training by taking the time to complete the evaluation. I've also posted it in the chat window if you want to go ahead and fill that out today. Um, see you on November 15th for our next webinar on Blogger. Thank you all for participating today.